Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Irina. I'm from UC Berkeley's Department of Landscape Architecture and Environmental Planning. And uh, let's see. Um, I'm broadly interested in landscape change and how broad scale change patterns translate to local decisions and also planning and design. I have been using Engine for a little less than a year, and my current projects fall into two broad groups, one related to urban development and one related to wetland change. I'm going to talk about both a little bit today. In terms of urban studies, I have been collaborating with um, Nick Clinton, who has been a fantastic expert, and Tsinghua University in China on the question of how development changes green space and thermal patterns in cities and how these dynamics may differ among the cities that show similar rate and magnitude of growth, but very different social and economic context of that growth. So specifically, we've been using Landsat Archive to develop and test various metrics of the spatial coupling between greenness variables and vegetation characteristics and thermal properties. And here is an example of one such metric, the angle between a thermal variable and a measure of greenness measured as a spectral angle. And here it's shown as a distribution where um, each bin corresponds to the percent urban area or percent city area per value of that angle metric. And then we're testing how these are different among urban land covers and land use types in different regions. And to better see it, we can actually map them um, this is an example for Dallas, Texas. So this angle metric shows different values for different land cover and land use types and helps us to separate them. What's more important, it also shows how some of the urban cover types that we think of as a one class, like low density residential, are actually really heterogeneous physically. And that is important if we use land cover maps as inputs to physical models. Um, we are also doing this over time, and I don't have any results to show yet. We're wrapping up some um, recent updates to the project, but we're basically comparing these results among different cities of the world, like Beijing and China, uh, growing cities in the US, Kiev, the capital of Ukraine, that have very different context of the growth and very different unique features on the ground that may affect these patterns. And we're looking for generalities and ways to characterize this urban development signatures in terms of physical variables and what they mean in terms of how development transforms the environment in which we live. Um, very exciting project and engine has been really useful. Um, the other, um, so also doing a lot of this in San Francisco Bay and heterogeneous regions climatically and topographically and um, socioeconomically. Um, another big part of my work, which I'll briefly mention, I'm using Engine here fairly recently, involves wetland change analysis. As some of you may know, wetlands are very difficult to map with remote sensing data, even with high resolution imagery that's not available everywhere. And this has been a big shortcoming for global wetland inventories, analysis of biodiversity, and also quantification of uh, greenhouse gas budgets from wetlands and coastal zones and such. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to use phonology and seasonal information from temporal archives of data such as land set and modus to understand how wetlands can be better detected and whether we can assess their um, changes in response to land use change, uh, disturbance, and particularly drought. So the sites where I'm focusing on development of these metrics right now are in California, Sacramento, San Joaquin Delta, a very dynamic region not too far from here, which plays a critical role in California's water supply, and small wetlands scattered in a large mixed cover landscape in Sierra Nevada foothills. But both of these projects, um, in the urban studies and in the wetlands, the idea is to develop these metrics, test them, and take them to continental and global scales, which will be the next step. So lastly, I just want to mention briefly the main research needs for me in terms of functionality of the engine are more advanced tools for time series analysis and maybe object-based um, capacity in the future where we can work with image regions rather than pixels as mapping units. Thank you. So actually, this is a question to Google, because I think Irina's got a really good point. Is there any movement towards object-oriented classification? Yes, and it's hard. So uh, you are thinking of going that way, but you realize it's hard? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> it's totally something that we want. So, yeah, the question is how we're using the NAEP images. So the NAEP images are really good for validation and ground truthing because we can see the features and even identify with human eye. We can't use them temporally very well because they're not consistently collected from phenology standpoint. So, yeah. Yeah, mostly ground truthing, but also using the uh, Google Earth for that as well. <laughs>